give you honor, we worship you, Jehovah, you're good. Your faith is Right where you are, 
just lift your voice in your home. Lift your voice. The master is there. A savior is there. A healer is there. Your helper is there. It's your protection. You'll be your provision. Hey, hey. Oh, oh. Somebody lift it. Somebody raise it. Oh, oh. You are my hiding place. Yes, Lord, we bless you. This you are my hiding place. We give you praise, Lord of Lords. We worship you. Our strength now we deliver our lives to you this morning once more. We commit all we are to you and we declare, Lord, have your way in the name of Jesus. Glorify yourself in Jesus' name. There is no one like you, Baba. There is none like you, Jesus. Our great God, we worship you. You are the one who you are my helper. 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 You are our helper. You are the Lord God Almighty that we run to. God bless you, everyone. Lift your voice and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Lift your voice and begin to just declare His goodness. Lift your voice and begin to declare His mercy. Lift your voice and begin to honor Him for what He is and who He is in your life. Take a moment and share the broadcast. Invite someone, encourage someone to come and to hear the word of God and to pray. We are blessing the name of the Lord this morning for his good and his mercy endures forever and his faithfulness is forever lasting from generation to generation. We thank you most high God. We give you praise. Uh, lift up our heads. We salute you. Uh, the rock of ages. We salute you. Our God, defender, the only wise God, keeper of life, giver of good things. Uh, let your name be praised. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be exalted in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ for you are a shield for us you are our glory and you are the lifter of our head we have no other God but you we have no other king but you we have no other provision but you Lord we thank you unto you be the glory unto you be the honor unto you be the adoration we celebrate you rock of all ages take the praise even now let all that we are receive the breath of God let all that we are receive the life of God let all that we are receive the peace of God now in the mighty name of Jesus. Here we are glorifying and thanking you. Here we are honoring you, the one that is able to keep us from falling. We give you praise. Thank you, Father, for this series against offense. We give you praise because it is a way by which you are keeping us from falling. You are keeping us from being a stumbling block to ourselves and to others. So therefore, we honor you for this teachings. We thank you because someone is being blessed. Someone is being helped we thank you because you are building us up even in our most holy faith as we pray out of the, our understanding and we pray in the Holy Ghost and even as we spend time in your word we are loaded by you father we thank you for we turn to the left or to the right and we know which way to go for your voice is our lead your voice is our director in our direction in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ and so you have directed us by your word into the story of offense the topic of offense and i know lord by this many lives are transformed many lives are being we focus back to the main thing to the needful thing which is you which is your word which is your purpose in them in the name of the lord jesus christ uh, lord we thank you we give you praise. Come on, continue to lift your voice and bless him. Begin to thank him because he's our shepherd. Begin to thank him because he's our everything. And we are nothing without you. Let your name be praised. Hallelujah. Lord, you are good. And your mercy endures forever. We are faithful to you and you are ever faithful to us. Thank you, Jesus. 
Help us to walk in you. Help us to live in you. Help us to rely on you more. Help us increase our faith more. Help us, oh God, turn to you and not to any other man or any other person. Help us, oh God, to make you our complete solution. Our complete solution, all in all, in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for the grace of God over our lives. Thank you for the grace of God. Someone lift your voice and thank him for his amazing grace for the sound of his grace for the sound of his life and his love uh, let your voice be lifted if you're grateful to god for your own life uh, begin to speak it into existence and thank him uh, lord i thank you for the life you have granted me thank you because my life belongs to you thank you because you have given me access uh, abundant on all sides i lack nothing uh, i am led by you i know which way to go uh, lord i give you praise uh, for you are the king of glory the lord god almighty our able God, our strengthener, our everything. What shall we render to you for all your many works and all your many graces and all your provision and all your help and all your direction and all that you have given to us father we come to say thank you take all the praise in the mighty name of jesus take all the glory in the mighty name of jesus for by you we move through troops and by you we leap through walls in the precious name of the lord jesus christ all power belongs to you god all honor belongs to you jehovah you are worthy to be praised hallelujah blessed be your name thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus Lord, we thank you. We give you praise. Uh, awesome is your name. Uh, hallelujah. We are on the topic of offense. We were on it yesterday and the day before. And we are going further to see what he has for us this morning. He's going to take us into some examples of people in the scriptures that got offended. And we look at the lessons uh, that we got from them. Again, there are several few, but important scriptures that we had touched on concerning um concerning this topic of offense uh, and the one we must keep in mind amen one we must keep in mind um first corinthians 8 9 be careful however that your liberty does not become a stumbling block for the weak be careful however that your liberty does not become a stumbling block for the weak that your liberty what you are free to do what you have the right to do what is rightfully yours be careful that it, not, it does not become a stumbling block for the weak offense is described as a stumbling block acts 24 16 hearing do i exercise myself to do always a, to have always a consciousness void of offense void of offense i exercise myself to be void of offense thank you jesus to be void of offense thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus to be void of offense not against god and not against any man glory be to god hallelujah and so we have been praying and talking to god about this individually i hope you actually take a moment to pray and that ask the lord to help you to be free of offense against anyone definitely i pray that no one here has the mind or has ever said or ever thought of thinking that they are offended by god he's a lover of all his children and seeks to do us well solely do us well that none shall perish and so therefore therefore we must read our hearts in any way of what looks like offense in the name of jesus not only that that offense is a canker worm it's a it's it's a root and under the umbrella of things like bitterness, forgiveness, malice, unforgiveness. And we've learned as believers over time, not just for these scriptures that we saw, not for just for this topic, but over time. Glory be to God. That all of these things are contrary to God. They don't express the love of God. And we were encouraged to walk in the spirit of god right to be led by the spirit to abide in the word of god to cultivate the fruit of the spirit to choose our teammates our circle of influence our circle of counselors wisely 
right and to keep a clear conscience and to keep a clear conscience we're also reminded of james chapter 4 verse 7 that says we have to submit ourselves to the lord and resist the devil and he will flee resist the adversary resist all that is connected to the enemy including offense we talked about how offense is a very small seed that you know it's like when when we say some someone's um life or drink or or, or if they if they are you know in the world we hear people say that somebody's drugs was laced offense is like a lacing of the spirit man of the believer and once it's in it may take some time but it it just changes your nature then you're going to want to defend yourself you're going to want to not forgive you're going to want to avenge yourself you're going to want to fight for yourself it kind of like spikes up the ego of flesh so we are encouraged james 4 7 resist the enemy lean on god focus on god acknowledge god in our lives submit to the authority of god resist the enemy stand against him and he will flee and so we looked at of course the ways in which we stand against the way the ways in which we stand against offense and the primary way was via the word of god so i want to look at um an example of offense in the scriptures of someone that we could say of where was offended um there were a few examples absalom was one of them king david's son and the content is quite long but i want us to take a peek at it and then we'll look at maybe one other person in the new testament in second samuel 13 second samuel 13 it's it's rather long chapter one um second samuel chapter 13 verse 1 to verse 20 and then again in verse 32 praise god and then again in verse 32 thank you jesus father we give you praise thank you jesus thank you jesus hallelujah let's go into the word of god so absalom was a son of king david and it's a story um of what happens when offense is taken personally and when it's built over a period of time i think we touched on that yesterday that it is something that is built over a period of time offense that it doesn't initially look to um respond right it doesn't initially look to respond um glory be to god it doesn't initially look to respond and so absalom had a sister named tama who was beautiful and tama also had a half brother called amon who was not getting not so much in good terms with tama i will say um thank you jesus and the story continues to let us know that amon um liked his sister so much that he became um sick or absalom sorry absalom he became sick and a friend of his jonadab jonadab right who was not very much a godly friend who was not very much a good counselor remember yesterday we touched on how when the wise follow the wise they become wiser but a friend of fool a friend of fools is setting themselves up for trouble right we specifically said choose your circle very wisely bible says in first corinthians 15 33 bad company corrupt corrupt good manners and so this friend this is just summarizing this friend jonadab you go and read it yourself first second time of 13 this friend jonadab was not very much a godly friend and he told and he told amon that he should pretend to be sick and when the king comes to see him that he should kill the king 
that he would like Tamar to come. He should tell the king, sorry, he should tell the king that he would like Tamar to come and give him food. So they were setting up this young woman, right? Amon didn't like the, 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 the sister. Absalom loved the sister. And Jonadab was the bad friend that told him, pretend to be sick. And when the king checks on you, tell the king that you want to see your sister, you want your sister to bring you food. May we not have friends that lead us the wrong way. This is why it's important to hear the voice of God, to lean on the voice of God. One of our, uh, our scriptures for today in the class that we're doing is from the book of Isaiah that says, whether I turn to the left or to the right, I hear a voice of God. I hear the, his voice. Isaiah 30, 21, I hear his voice telling me, look, this is the way to go. And so a, a believer absent, absent of the voice of God can be led by anyone. A believer absent of the voice of God can be led by anyone. May that not be me. May that not be you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so when the king came to see Ammon, he requested Tamar, his sister, should come and give him food. And the king agreed. So when the sister Tamar came, Ammon raped her. Ammon raped her. And we know of the story and the curse that came upon the household because of this incident. Ammon raped her. And when Absalom got to know, when Absalom was aware, he spoke to his brother, neither good, the Bible says, neither good nor bad, for Absalom hated Ammon because he had forced his sister Tamar. He spoke to her, neither good nor bad. He didn't say anything. He didn't mention it. He just kept it. So there are people who keep things because they keep their peace. And they, you know, I've given several examples of that. But then there are people who don't say a word because they are harboring it in. They are building it up. Remember yesterday, I think we used the, the, the example of the job, or was it on the 12th noon line? They preserve some things to try to allow the person's cup to be full. And they build things, they build things, they build things, they build things. And when they are really full of vengeance, full of anger, full of malice, they pour upon the person. And then you now realize that even if they pour upon you to offend you, there are things that show up from years ago, months ago, things you probably thought were forgotten about, things you probably even spoke about and and hugged each other and forgot about but because the person is a person that holds on to offense or that chooses to hold on to offense they build up things and so the bible says that absalom he was the king's son remember he was right he was in the rightful place he was yes offended or hurt because of what happened to his sister but he did not speak good he did not speak bad to his brother he simply hated him. It was there, there was a, they were half brothers. He hated what he had done and he did not say anything. Absalom was really offended, but he did not deal with it. He kept it in his heart. And that's dangerous. I pray for the Lord to grant you the wisdom to deal with what needs to be dealt with immediately. So you can deal with something by talking about it with whoever is is concerned but most importantly deal with it in the presence of god as well so you can let it go you know the scripture says that we are to not go well it's often referred to concerning married people or couples but don't go to bed with with anger that simply tells me don't let the sun go down on your wrath rather that simply tells me don't allow it to move into the next phase, the next day, the next, the next day of your life, the next area of your life. And I think beyond just in, in, in marital relationship, this should be applied in every relationship. Because what, what is covered, just like sin, just like what, what the adversary sometimes wants for believers to do, what you cover can grow, can only grow. Think of the orange. 
that's in the refrigerator if it's there long enough it begins to grow it may look like it's in a good place it may look like it's in a place where it's it's like it's just there to be preserved but if you don't get to it in time when you get there it will have mold on it just like the things in the farm some things are only able to grow when they are covered under the earth he that covers the sin is not wise he that covers offense is not wise either but the disadvantage in covering offense is that it puts us away from god the disadvantage is on us many times the person i'm offended by doesn't care they've done what they've done they've said what they've said they are they've moved on some may not even notice or recognize that you're offended just they just expect you to deal with it and so absalom did not deal with it did not forgive it or did not discuss it the bible says he makes us understand that he kept it in his heart and two years passed how many of us know somebody like that how many of us know somebody like that i'm lifting my hands thank you jesus thank you jesus i'm lifting my hands two years passed and absalom planned and got amon his brother killed two years passed so this is taking us now to verse 32 he waited two years plotted planned. this is what offense does when it's not dealt with it has a growth that comes upon it and if you allow the growth to, to do what it does ideas will come plans will come plots will come we will not do what an absalom did but there are many other ideas that the flesh and the, the mind under the control of the flesh can get a believer to do so what started off as an offense with absalom which absalom you know he could have dealt with it immediately he could have sorted it out he could have told and you know they were in, they were in you know in, in a family system told an elder dealt with it banished him immediately punished him it was an offense that he was right he would have been right as the son of david to deal with it but because it wasn't addressed it wasn't sorted out immediately it led into hatred betrayal malice hypocrisy and then ultimately murder i want to just be an encouragement to someone to let us know that offense must be dealt with because once it enters your heart it takes a hold it is rooted and it will turn into something else unless you exercise yourself what's that scripture act 24 exercise yourself to be void this is why the things that we mentioned yesterday are so important because your your natural self is not going to want to just live offense free right and one one of the things that we saw concerning absalom was that he himself also ended up being killed the love of power I believe the same root of the same root that allowed offense to stay in him for his brother led him to betray David, his father, the king. Right? And so he himself in turn lost his life. So it was an untamed offense. It wasn't put under control. When you're offended, the enemy makes your mind a playground, gets you confused, tell, tells you things, exaggerate things, begins to justify things from the past. Anywhere there is offense, betrayal will want to be there. Anywhere there is offense, self is there, flesh is there. Anywhere there is offense, we are provoked, we are triggered to betrayal when you are living in offense. 
living in offense. So we are to exercise our nature not to, not to become offended. Not to become offended. We'll take a scripture, Colossians 3, 12 to 14. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. Put on love. Again, these, this reminds me of the Galatians chapter 5. These are fruit of the Spirit. Right? Put on love, mercy, kindness, humility, meekness. It says bear one another, forgiving one another. And so when you wear the nature of God, like these things listed in Colossians, or like the fruit of the Spirit, you will, by God's special help, you will be able to ward off offense from taking root in your heart in the name of Jesus. Another person we'll look at um, tomorrow that was offended. John the Baptist had a moment of offense. And we'll look at it and then we'll get to um, more instructions by the grace of God of how to ward off offense and then how we know we are offended because oftentimes people always say I've forgiven her I've forgiven him I'm not offended but there are manners in which you can observe yourself pay attention to your responses to some things and and the like to know when you are offended or that you are offended and so the word of God will help us to look in the word and ourselves so we can rid offense once and for all i want you to lift up your voice and begin to ask the lord to help you against the battle of offense that you have won it help you to focus your life and your heart to not be a stumbling block to yourself or to anyone as a result of offense in the name of jesus that the spirit of offense the spirit of betrayal will will not take a hold in your life in the name of jesus that unlike absalom we will deal with what looks like offense immediately it will be uprooted from us we will not harbor things in to wait on for the moment in which they are built up and to pour out anger or or hatred or malice upon anyone we will deliberately we will deliberately reject offense according to that james 4 will deliberately reject offense glory be to god if it enters our heart it takes no root in the name of the lord jesus christ in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ let's lift our voice and talk to god specific for you if there is an issue or a situation in which you may feel offended by something or someone even now even now lift up your voice and ask the lord to release that from your heart and your mind in the name of jesus that you'll be free from it and release that person and give it over to the lord ask him to take total control in the mighty name of the lord jesus christ for it is through this that we have the peace of god it is through this that we have the peace of god father we give you praise we bless your name we honor and adore you for you are good and your mercy endures forever in the mighty name of Jesus. We are at the half of the hour and we'll digress till tomorrow. Everyone come back, invite somebody to come and hear the word of God. Prayerfully, possibly tomorrow we'll have a guest speaker as well as we round up this topic of offense and the Lord has delivered us. Don't forget what I, I encourage us to do is to make a list of whom or what you might have been offended, offended with. Or, offend, or be offended about um, no matter how long ago it was and begin to prayerfully deal with them one by one asking the Lord to give you wisdom to give you direction what do you do about it or simply Lord take it from my heart read this from my heart read this from my mind in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ for what we want more than anything is to be at peace with the Lord our God in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we are blessed, we are helped, we are helped by God, and we are secured in him in the mighty name of Jesus. If you have a birthday today, I want to celebrate you. Thank God for your life. I pray God's blessings over you in Jesus' name. Perhaps you, your tent, perhaps your loved ones, perhaps your spouse. May the Lord ever cause you to remain celebrated in Jesus'
hallelujah and of course if you're here for the first time welcome this is mcicf we meet monday through friday we have been going and going and going october will be year number five by the grace of god i want to encourage you to share the broadcast and bless someone with it again welcome to all our first timers our scheduled hours on monday through friday um 6 a.m eastern standard time right here on the channel you're watching we're always live on facebook on this channel and on youtube on the channel where you are um this is the early risers morning devotion praise god also we have our 12 noon prayer watch every monday through friday 12 noon est on our zoom on our zoom channel um to get information about us and get your schedule straight so you can join us and don't miss anything or put your email in our email list we don't bombard we don't junk they could all tell you that you can definitely find out more through the websites um, the websites listed at the bottom of your screen for um www.morningcrew.org for general information who we are what we are etc and then um www.fieldsofgoshen.org for our academy we have a school and the lord has been helping and blessing us there praise the lord god bless you one and all the lord keep you and cause his face to ever shine on you sister ego one of my sisters who's always on youtube has a birthday today can we pray for her sister ego we bless god for your life we honor thank you sister ego amen i won't try to say that last name but we want to bless god for your life ma great grace upon you we'll be celebrating more at the 12 noon live thank god for you happy birthday the lord bless you and keep you the lord cause his face to ever shine on you in the mighty name of jesus great grace is upon your life and you will experience more of god's peace and joy on every side in jesus mighty name congratulations ma in jesus name you are no sister ego at least you've, you've seen that name right 12 noon folks we know that name lord we thank you she just had a an awesome testimony as well not too long ago regarding her daughter chizaram who also had a birthday recently father we thank you for this family we give you praise for your peace over them in jesus name they have received your help they have received your wisdom they have received your direction they have received your clarity they have received your purpose Things are working for them, and it is well with them in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we bless you. Everyone have an amazing, wonderful, great day. Um, Sister Andrea on the YouTube has the, the link for the 12 Noon Live. Or so for those that may want it, you can just click that Zoom and go up on over there. If you click it now, it'll still take you there. You can just save the, um, save the ID. Right, save the ID and come back to you later. The thing about Zoom is that it keeps... It keeps a history of your ID, so you don't always have to enter it. So if you click on it now and enter the room now, no one's there, but you'll be able to um, find it later easily. It's also on your screen. I've removed the banner at the bottom, so you can screenshot if you want to see it on your screen um, and save that for later. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, everyone. The Lord bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful day in the mighty name of Jesus. Stay blessed. Stay well. Stay in the face of God. God bless you.